Today, I want to talk to you briefly about the sliders. The sliders are probably the most confusing part of Hueforge. Second most confusing is how the color blending works, but I already did a whole video on that. But a lot of people, especially when you're first starting out, don't understand how the sliders work, and that's fair. So I want you to imagine that the slider, any individual slider, represents the entire height of the model from zero down here to two, in this case, two millimeters up here. So if this slider is here, it is 0.56 millimeters up from the bottom. And since this is the lowest one, that means that 0.56 millimeters is going to be black. Actually, it's one layer less than that, so 0.48, but let's not worry about that right now. The next highest slider, not the one net to its right, the next tallest slider, so in this case, over here, at, at 12, is the next color. It's brown after black, so black, then brown, then gray, then white. Their horizontal matter doesn't matter. They aren't stacked on top of each other. That's a very common misconception is that you take the first slider, then you add, at, you, you set a second slider on top of it for 15 layers. So you have six layers of the black, and then you have 15 layers of the gray, and then you have 12 layers on top of that of the brown, and so on. Not how the sliders work. That would have caused all kinds of issues in terms of using the interface. Um, this was done not because necessarily it was the most intuitive, but because once you started using the tool, much easier to use it this way than the other way where they're bring my sliders below i can bring my sliders above there's no restrictions on where a slider can move to that was one of the issues i ran into i used to try to keep them all sorted but then you could never move i couldn't decide i wanted this slider taller than this one or shorter than this one i couldn't move through it it would always keep it sorted so right now and for the foreseeable future it will always be in this absolute mode each slider shows its absolute stopping location. This is the layer at which you stop printing this color, right? So I wish I could show, I couldn't, maybe someday I'll be able to show, I wish I could show that, you know, brown is only really going from here to here, and there's no brown here, right? And then gray is really only going from here to here, and there's no gray down here. I, I want to show that, but I couldn't figure out how to show that, so I left it like this. Um, that's my limitation, not the sliders. Another thing that's commonly confusing is this. These two sliders have a red on the bottom. The red on the bottom means that they're both at the same height. And when they're both at the same height, the behavior is undefined. What does that mean? What does the program, what is the program supposed to do when two sliders are at the same height? Which color should it pick? Because remember, the height of the slider is saying, this is where I change from one color to the next. And it's saying, I want to change, what, from gray to brown, from brown to gray? From gray to white, from brown to white, what am I supposed to be doing? So they have to be uh, you know, at least one apart. And sometimes it is very useful to be just one apart. Um, so again, uh, let me restate that the location of the sliders doesn't matter. Let me show that here. We can look at this image. You can see what it looks like. Um, and these are at 9 and 15. And if I change their order, put the brown here, gray here, and then I move this one down to 9, this one up to 15, you can see it looks exactly the same. The software is literally looking from the bottom up and building itself uh, the color blending. And so um, it just looks at the lowest slider followed by the next lowest slider and so on and so forth. Doesn't matter how many sliders you have, doesn't matter where you put your sliders. If I drop a blue slider all the way over here and move it up, it starts interacting as if it was you know, sitting in here. It, it, there is no difference in how it interacts based on which slider it is on this list. Okay, so I hope that this cleared up some confusion around the sliders. Remember, sliders are not relative, they're absolute. Each slider represents the whole spacing between the bottom and the top of the model. And where your slider is, is where it stops being that color. So uh, here, it stops being gray or blue-gray, gray-blue, at 1.04 millimeters. So by, at 1.04 millimeters, it becomes this white. And... Um, that's how it that's how it calculates. Now it's 1.2. So basically that is where it becomes that color stops being that color is that layer. And so if you go from the previous slider down to that slider, you can see how many layers you have. So this goes from 9 to 14, so it's five layers. Um, and that's correct because 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 is actually white, but 13, uh, 9 through 13 are, are um gray. And then obviously five to nine or five to eight are brown so 
Um, at some point, I might actually add the number of layers it is currently in there. Um, but that's really what I wanted to get across is that they do doesn't matter left to right. And it doesn't matter and it isn't relative. It's an absolute stack. And where each one is, is where it stops being that color. And so however many layers are between it and the one color below it or how many layers of that color are printed. I hope this helps people. Um, the other general rule of thumb is you want to go from darker colors to lighter colors and generally from lower TDs to higher TDs. You want your highest TDs often here. These are actually all pretty low. The only higher TD color. If I were to bring in a higher TD color, uh, transmission distance color, in between, I might get some better effects. But um, this is this is how they generally work. You generally want to go from dark to light. And again, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. I can drop this cyan in over here. And you can see it shows up at the bottom in where it should be black. Here it shows up where it should be brown. And then I get above the brown and it shows up in the gray. And then I come above the gray and then it starts showing up in the white. It's all about where it is vertically in the set of sliders. But I hope that helps you. I recommend playing with the sliders and the filament at first with simple images or simple color schemes. Don't get too complicated. Learn how the sliders work, learn how they affect your image, and um, and learn to trust the TDs of your filaments. Um, if you're using filaments that are in the library, like Bamboo Labs, Polymaker makes great filaments and has all of them in the library reliably. Um, you know, if you're using these filaments, you should get very good results. But if you're using your own filaments and you calculate your own transmission distances, the most important thing you can do is start trusting the transmission distance that you've calculated. And so once you start to believe what HueForge tells you your image is going to look like, you're going to start getting better and better images. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. And I will see you next time.